So here we have Theo's FH3, which is a two balanced armature and one dynamic driver pair of inexpensive IEMs. And Theo sent me this pair for free to review. So I kind of don't, kind of dis, not doing cheap IEMs so much anymore. But I thought, why not I'll give them a go? Because people do ask me about the cheap stuff. I don't want to get heavily into cheap, inexpensive IEMs because it's just not my thing. But all the same, it's interesting to know, like, you know, 10 years ago, I go into say one of the local electronic stores and try out the inexpensive IEMs and the ones around this price were just I just didn't like them. But a lot has changed in 10 years and so we have stuff that is, you know, not far much above 100 bucks and they sound alright. And I th expect this to be the same. I try not to expect too much from stuff. I'm going to take a prediction since I'm not having heard them and say that they're probably going to sound Oh, well, let's try. I'm going to guess they're going to be V shaped. Let's see. And I'm going to guess they're going to need some burn in. But the treble isn't going to be perfect. But they just did a, a single dynamic driver for under 100 bucks, which apparently is supposed to sound pretty good. And so, other than I guess they don't have anything particularly exciting in the box, compared to the more expensive IEMs, of course, well, everything. Oh, they give you the hard case. The hard case is good. And the soft case. That's very nice. Now, do we have tips anywhere? But it feels like it's got stuff in it. We've got a cleaning brush, which is necessary. Hard cases are nice, especially if you want to protect your IEMs. But even if you do get, say, a different pair of IEMs in the future, you get to a nice hard case to go with them. So I can feel tips in there. I'll pull them all out. We're going to have to scatter them everywhere. Okay, so we've got foamies in there. Yay. I kind of wonder why they don't do this, the normal foam case for these. Maybe the foam does cost them a bit, and they're really trying to keep the, the dollars down, the price down. We do have squishy silicon. These are kind of dead standard things. Right. Well, it looks like we have different bore tips, maybe. I see colours coming out. Yep, we might have some... I think these are the, the kind of base ones. They used to call them base, more basey tips. With the dynamic driver, this might actually be able... To, we might be able to get some more base out, or more or less base out of them, or tune them a little bit, at least fairly relatively. Oh, these are... Yeah, these are the other ones they had, which, you know, they have... Uh, different focus that was in the uh, the FH5 and the like. Right, well that's about all that's in there. Now on for a listen. I gave the FH3s a, a good few days run in just to ensure that any changes due to crossovers or drivers or whatever would have happened and it wouldn't affect my review as I've had some occasionally had in-ear monitors in which actually did change dramatically over their initial use period. Now, well, where to begin with these? Actually, I was pretty impressed straight out of the boxes. They're a good, have a good punchy sound, obviously due to the dynamic driver. You know, actually pretty good mid-range and pretty good instrument delivery. And, uh, well, maybe the treble was, if you want the, the short answer, is a little bit harsh. I mean, it's not as clean sounding as higher-end IEMs. But they've got, if I take off one of these tips, I'm just using spin fits at the moment because they're more comfortable. I think now if I rotate this around, you can just see the tip of the balanced armature drivers in there, up almost against the the kind of little grill there. Now I didn't take out the grill this time. If you've seen my previous videos, you can actually take this grill out, and you risk getting earwax into the actual driver, which would be a disaster, or into the IM, which would also be a disaster. So apparently, maybe you can probably the sound might become a maybe a touch cleaner if you did do that. So just an option there, So, but I didn't do that for my listening as really I don't want to wreck the IEMs and kind of generally people won't start getting out, you know, pins and start prying out the uh, the grills, although you can. Now, of that sound, well, it's I would say it's got a, a good whack of bass, quite reasonably forward mids and, uh, well, a treble that depends kind of what tips you select. So with these spin fits actually did pretty well. They brought out the bass punchiness, they brought out a, a reasonable amount of treble and, and kept the uh, the mid-range sufficiently forward. And I think that's where the, the, the mid-range is where they do well as well as the bass. And um, if the treble is, well, if you want the short answer, maybe a little bit less than, a little bit less than perfect, but let's get into that. So my usual test for detail retrieval is an album from David Chesky called Jazz and the New Harmonic. 
And it's one of those albums where, you know, detail is everything you need to listen to it on a high-end system. And if you watch my other reviews, I've said I don't listen to it in the car because you just can't get in the nuances. It's something where it's good for testing percussion because it's a, there are a lot of symbols in there. And actually this delivery of symbols, which can be not so great with some IEMs and percussion can be not so great if things are out of phase, was actually very good. And I was quite impressed about with the... Uh, Kind of at least there was a reasonable amount of detail and instrument separation in in, in that, and it, although the very low level nuances of say the lighter cymbal hits were kind of missing, you could hear some of the echo that was in the recording, you know, off the off the walls and of the venue. So actually, it was did pretty well. Although again, not high end I am well. Obviously, they're inexpensive, but still for the price they're asking, very well. Now on something less. Maybe well, I think what was probably more most noticeable is how cohesive the sound was. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, cohe incohesive sound would mean like the bass and the mids and the treble sounded like separate things, but they don't. With these, they sound very like it's all one sound, all coming from maybe like like coming from one driver, like you get with a good pair of headphones. And that was what was really pleasing. There were no seemingly like no holes in the sound that you know maybe some. With where you get with some in-ear monitors or headphones where some parts of the sound kind of don't come through as well. Actually, it was good and punchy, and yeah, it just sounded, you know, instruments sounded real, which was a really good job of it. Now, with Miles Davis' Mystery, which is another of my favorite tracks, it's not a very resolving track. Uh, it's a uh, jazz fusion track, and it's got a mixture of kind of synthetic and, and natural instruments, and it's a, maybe not, it's got a bit of a weird, slightly bass-heavy mastering, and it had these had good punch. Um, if not the most bass, at least with these on, and again I'll talk about how the tips affect that in a bit, or the wider sound stage, but you know, good sharp imaging and giving a good sense of depth. Um, maybe this is where I started to notice the sound stage was a little bit narrow on these, and it was started to become more noticeable with other kinds of jazz, such as uh, the seed ensemble. Check the description for the, the, these songs, by the way. The narrower sound stage really shows here, kind of keeping the instruments right in the middle. And maybe almost a little bit congested, you know, as things got complex. You know, the, that in the middle sound is something I usually get with high impedance headphones when they're underpowered. When you have something that can't swing the voltage, everything squashes into the middle. And there was a bit of that with uh, when things a lot started going on on the in the music, and it kept that focus on the mids, which was great with instruments. But still, when things got complex, maybe a bit congested. Same with uh, Mark Ribo on, um, I won't try and pronounce the Spanish name, I'll muck it, you know, I don't want to kind of uh, embarrass myself by mispronouncing Spanish. Again, check the description. Same kind of thing there. It didn't bring out the guitar as well as some in-ear monitors did, which was kind of surprising considering how well the mid-range was done on other tracks. And so it was okay on that. Now, getting into something different, one of the albums I've liked recently is from a, a brand called Merge of Equals, which came up randomly in Rune Radio. And uh, this is where the treble came out. You know, this just drivers straight up against the uh, kind of uh, grill. Brought, made for a little bit of a harsh treble. And you do get better treble out of, uh, you know, higher end IEMs where the uh, setup is more complex. And it kind of very, was more noticeable in the percussion and vocals with these. Now in that, what you could do was change the tips. Now if I change to say the standard black tips, probably these give a little bit tame the treble a bit, which is not something you want maybe on uh, your acoustic track so much, but on your modern music, this probably is where it works really well. So you don't get such a bright treble and it doesn't become fatiguing. And that's what worked a little bit better with uh, Merge of Equals. Now, and other other kinds of music as well, say pop music or what have you, it is, we'll call that, um, it's fairly similar in, in, in the result. The other tips that you have are these, well, the other, op other option is to, enhance the treble a bit, or these are probably supposed to enhance the mids, these white and red tips, and they kind of tamed the bass a bit and brought out the treble a bit more. Maybe some people are like a slightly lighter, less bass-heavy presentation would like these. But the interesting one were these grey and red tips, and I believe these are, Fio describes these as bass enhancing, and they gave a result in a very thick presentation, and this was really good for stuff where you want a lot of bass. So those people out there who do listen to things like rap, where just in my casual listening, I found a lot of rap music isn't mastered with a lot of bass, which is really odd, considering the you know how people like to listen to it. But another discussion for another day. These 
brought out really thick bass. And you know, what really worked with these, which music I like, is Fleetwood Mac. And Fleetwood Mac is that style of old pop music, which was not mastered with much bass. I guess but back then they had all the kind of paper cone speakers which had a really thick sound already, so they tended to master it a bit lighter sounding. Modern day stuff tends to be brighter, especially in the high end, so you want a thicker sounding sound. And this, these really balanced up that kind of really brightly mastered pop music like Fleetwood Mac. And if you want that thick sound, this brought it out really well. Maybe a bit too thick in some respects through the bass. It wasn't the cleanest bass, not as clean to my impressions as you know, the, the spin fits, I recommend getting, if you do get a pair of these, get a pair of spin fits. These actually did pretty well. But in that, so what was I using to listen? Well, mostly I use Chords Hugo 2, which is kind of not the combination of gear that people would likely use. You're not going to use a $2,500 device with a pair of <laughs> IEMs which are less than a tenth of the price, or a twentieth of the price maybe. Indeed, I did try, try them with less expensive stuff and just the good old iPhone lightning adapter and the precision out of the bass and stuff like that the drive isn't quite as good I mean you notice it more in dynamic drivers that these the lower powered things I mean these this little device does really well with in-ear monitors better than you'd expect Apple really does have done well with what they've just squeezed into this into what's hiding in the plug literally and you know I'm, I was pretty happy with um, even the sound out of this I mean, not as much precision out of the bass or, or as much kind of uh, instrument separation that was available with, uh, you know, the higher end gear. And likewise, you're not going to get quite as much out of, say, something like a good old M9 as you are out of a Hugo 2, obviously. But it does, you know, these things, it, these FH3s will drive out of anything pretty much. You'll just, but the, the thing that was impressive is that they did scale up pretty well and you'll probably end up spending a few hundred on a, on a, on a good DAP you know, way more than these cost, and get better results. So they, I think that was most impressive is they don't sound like under $200 in-ear monitors. They sound like something more expensive. And as I was saying in the unboxing half, you know, 10 years ago or whatever, when you went out and got a pair of $200 IMs, they sounded like harsh and hard to listen with. And nowadays you can get sub $150 in-ear monitors, which sound better than stuff did that was three dollars $400 10 years ago. So a good, kind of actually very cohesive and punchy pair of in-ear monitors. They're definitely, I'd say, something I'd recommend. Again, not the cleanest treble. I mean, I'm used to better quality treble. But if you want your, your nice thick bass, I mean, they seem to, they respond as dynamic drivers tend to with, um, although in this case, it kind of counter to my, the normal thing where normally you have more bass from a narrower nozzle. It seems that the whole, you know, setup in here is affected by these tips pretty, pretty impressively. So that's Fio's FH3s. Don't forget to like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell button as well to be notified when I have a new video out. Also, if you'd like my buying advice, consider, even for just like a couple of bucks a month, I will happily help you out be with you, your gear purchases and giving you good advice, which could save you a lot more than that in the future and will also help me make these videos. You also get to chat to me, influence what I buy, ask questions first on the live stream, get my early impressions of gear that has come in, and uh, you get to chat to a whole bunch of other interesting people who are also my supporters, some of whom whose names you can see on screen right now. Also, if you would do consider buying something like these FH3s or anything else I've reviewed, and there's, if there's a link in the description to where you can buy them, please use that link. So that will also help me out a little bit as well. So as always, thanks once again for watching, and I'll hope to see you online.